right. All right, what's up, y'all? Just wanted to record a quick uh, follow-up uh, from last night's uh, Omawale After Dark um, and answer the question uh, to my audience. This is mostly for my audience. Um, so I wanted to speak to why I threw uh, Taz exclusives out of the live last night. Um, I'm going to speak to that uh, very quickly. Um, but first and for foremost, uh, happy Manhood Monday. Today is a Manhood Monday. Um, so today at 8.30, I expect to see y'all on the channel for episode 9 of the Race, Manhood, and Power podcast. Uh, and immediately after that, I'll be live for uh, office hours with Professor Omawale. Um, so family, definitely pull up. Tonight's episode is going to be a good one. We're dealing with um, black men and the negative impact of low racial self-esteem. So uh, you definitely want to be there for that. It's going to be a good show. So let me speak to just really quickly. Um, this is not going to be edited. I'm going to record this and just toss it up on my channel. Um, but why I threw uh, Taz exclusives off of the stream last night. Uh, from the very beginning of the stream, I made it, I made it clear um, that I was holding space uh, for black women to come up and speak on the topic that we were dealing with yesterday. And uh, I said that if any men wanted to speak, I would definitely let them come up as well. But my preference, I really wanted to hear uh, from the sisters, given the sensitivity um, of the content uh, and given who was putting the content out, right? So I said that from the beginning. Uh, if you've ever been on any of my lives, I always make it clear uh, that when you pull up, A, cam up, be in a well-lit environment, and please keep the profanity um, to a minimum. That just is what it is, right? Um, you know, as a content creator, when I decided to take this content creation thing uh, serious, um, I did a lot of research, I did a lot of study to prepare for this. Um, so I'm clear that we are an educational channel, right? There's an element of edutainment, right? Because you have to inspire, you have to inform, and you have to entertain. Um, but in terms of the mix, I'm much more education than I am kind of like entertainment and niggatry. So I do really try to stay away from the niggatry and the negativity. Um, however, I will speak on... Uh, current events and topics if they can assist right and helping to further the discussions that we are currently having on the channel <laughs> right so that being said I understand my mandate right I mentioned it last night Baba Rudy has has a saying where he says the mandate is to uh, teach the ignorant but to ignore stupidity right so you're never going to get me off of my square. You're never gonna have me emotional, uh, yelling back and forth at a screen. I'm just not um, gonna do that. That's not my MO. Um, I refuse to put on a pair of clown boots and enter the circus. That's just not who I am. I mean, folks can create as much content about me uh, as they choose to do. I mean, I'll accept it as promotion and, and engagement. It just is what it is. But me personally, I'm not going to do it, right? So when I invited the brother up, or when he popped up, because I didn't invite him up, but when he popped up on the stream, you know, I did pull him pull him on. And he came on somewhat belligerent, you know. I gave him the first, like, hold on, brother. Like, let the music play, then I'll let you speak your piece. And, you know, he got, does what he does. So I muted him and sent him to the back. I allowed the music to finish playing. <laughs> And then I pulled him back up and I allowed him to ask his question. I started to answer his question. He did the same thing. I had to just, you know, uh, again, just remove him from the stream, right? When I when I put out my, I put out an episode called The Prelude to the Podcast, and it was dealing with the, uh, the global crises in African manhood. And I titled it The 12 Point Buck Theory of Black Male Development. And what I was arguing is that we as black men have, have various areas of our personhood that needs to be developed. One of those, of course, being communication, right? That's not the only one. Uh, there's 12 different. I actually, I don't know, I don't have them written here. So I always keep them in my show notes, right? So mind, body, spirit, emotions, character, communication, family, finances, relationships, attitude, vision, and purpose, right? Those are the 12 points 
that I try to engage through my content. Whenever I do a race, manhood, and power episode, I always close out by speaking to one of those points. Um, so I'm very clear that, you know, nobody's going to get me off of my square and get me like talking crazy on the internet just because I just don't do the circus act. I don't do, I don't do performative art. That's not, it's not who I am. That's not who I've ever been. I'm not a clown. Um, I'm not here to chase the algorithm uh, or to do anything to build an audience. Um, you won't ever get me doing that. So if that's what you're here looking for to any new followers, right, or any new subscribers, I'm sorry. Uh, you're just not going to get that from this channel, you know. So I also have to keep in mind that when I'm presenting myself, I also have to make sure that the people who have aligned themselves with me, that I represent them in the best light, right? I have sponsors who sponsor content on my channel, right? Advertising partners. And how would it look them supporting me and giving funds to this channel so that we can produce the content that we produce and then for me to be on my channel you know engaging in niggatry screaming back and forth you know uh at a screen that's never going to happen you're never going to see me doing that because i have to keep in mind that i i represent just more than myself you know i also represent the people that support me this is a team effort over here and while my team did not want me to do this response i just wanted to put it out there because i want to make it very clear i'm, I'm never going to do anything where i have to then come back and apologize to my audience like hey i'm so sorry that y'all saw me act like that You're like nah like i'm just not i'm not going to do it you know what i mean i understand the space that we are dealing in i understand like with these women's sphere and these manosphere content creators a lot of them are unhinged and a lot of them are seeking attention and it kind of just is what it is um, because I've made a lot of their content uh, the subject of my uh, verbal assault or intellectual inquiry I expect to get some pushback so that kind of like it just comes with the territory and I know Sister Katie J if you're watching this you're probably going to say well why are you giving them attention and the thing is if you look at the top anti-black misandrous um, content creators on YouTube, I mean, like three of them together have more than a quarter, uh, quarter million subscribers, just three of them, right? Uh, and if I was to include uh, a tiny TKO in that number, I would have to put it at a half a million subscribers. If you look on the other side, right, the top... Uh, <laughs> you know, misogynist creators in the manosphere, right? That are creating negative content that I'm also speaking against. Like, I mean, you have one person over there who has more than a million subscribers. So I've always made it clear that I have to speak to these issues because an alternative uh, has to be shown, right? You always have to do uh, what I refer to as the, um, the dialectic of the clean glass of water or the, or the dialectic of the glass of water. And that comes from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, right? The, you always have to put the clean glass of water next to the dirty glass. If you allow the dirty glass to go unchallenged, then that's going to be what it's going to be. And people are only going to drink from the dirty glass. Um, I know that I'm here to speak to young people. You know, my audience demographics are changing every day. I'm getting more and more younger subscribers. So the content plan and the strategy is certainly working. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna, you know, you know how when, we, when you were younger, right? Just think of the profile of this individual, right? You have a 16 or 17 year old person who, you know, has been raised by a single mother, single, a 16 or 17 year old black male being raised by a single mother. And this, this teenage boy is always trying to fight all of his mother's boyfriends whenever they come around or whatever. And I feel like in many ways, I don't know Taz at all. I don't know how old he is, but I think the level of his engagement and like men mentality, I, don't, I feel like he hasn't matured past that level of engagement. You know, running around trying to fight his mother's boyfriends. I'm not saying that his mother was a single mom or anything. I'm talking about that type of profile um, because now what you're doing is you're chasing 
men around the internet, you know, trying to defend the honor of your mother or your wife, whatever. But like, come on, bro. Like you asked me the question and I'll, I'm going to answer it again because I tried to answer it last night before you kind of like got belligerent. I understand that people put a battery in your pack. Pardon. I understand that people put a battery in your back and um, you're expected to uphold this mantle of like uh, the pit bull of the wo woman's fair. So if anybody speaks about a woman's fair content creator, they got to deal with Taz. But like, I understand all of that. Right. But here's the thing, bro. You asked me, why was your wife on the flyer? Your wife is a content creator. She's also a grown woman and I respect her as a grown woman. Nothing that I said in the content and or the flyer either demeaned your wife, called her out of her name, or misrepresented any of her perspectives that she has put out in the public for either agreement or disagreement. Now, of course, I took umbrage with, uh, you know, your wife being one of the co-conveners of the Black YouTube Nuremberg trials where Black males were put on trial and sentenced to death. Uh, so I kind of like played on that with the artwork, right? The Nuremberg trials, uh, you know, your wife was, was also did a follow-up panel where Cynthia G talked about she's being called Hitler. And a lot of the things that she said were very Hitler-esque, right? So I get that. So, I mean, that was the flyer. That was, I mean, uh, uh, clearly it worked, right? Because all of the gargoyles showed up in the in the chat last night and my moderators were like, what the... And I apologize to my mods. Like I said, this is an education channel. So I know a lot of y'all were like, who the hell is all these like weirdos in the chat right now? Because the gargoyles definitely showed up. Like, uh, but that just is what it is. I guess it comes with the territory. But we're not going to be derailed. We're going to continue to teach. We're going to continue to educate. We're going to continue to inform. <laughs> Because that's, that's, at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. So, I feel like that's really the majority of what I wanted to say. Uh, based on my analytics, most people on my channel, the average viewer, will watch about 16 minutes of my content. So, I'm, I'll be interested to see how much of this video gets watched. <laughs> because it's under 16 minutes. I'm going to cut it off before it gets to 16 minutes. Uh, just to see like how this plays out or whatever. Just a little uh, experiment for myself to see if uh, most people watch this full video. But yo, that's really it. Like I threw him off the screen because he didn't really come to engage. He came to perform. And I am not a performance artist. I am not a circus entertainer. I don't have it in me to screen or to scream back and forth at a screen. Like that shit is just weird energy to me. So I just I just don't have that. So that's why I threw the brother off the, off the stream. That was it. It was really that simple. It wasn't anything personal. I don't know him uh, personally. Um, I understand, like I said, that he's, you know, like the pit bull of the woman's sphere. You know, I think that the woman's sphere has kind of like built his channel. I would imagine that most of his subscribers, right, if you look at his analytics, my analytics are about 90-10. So I have about 90 male subscribers and 10% female subscribers. So, but I'm a growing channel. <laughs> You know, I would argue that his are probably, I doubt 50-50. <laughs> you know, he's probably more like 60, you know, women and 40 men, if that, probably 70, 30. But, you know, they grew his channel, so I get it. You know, you're here to do content creation, but fam, that's, I do content creation, but that is always, I always have to remind folks that this content stuff is just an extension of the actual work, <laughs> that I do, the organizing work that I do. So um, I can't kind of like get into the mud and get into the muck of things here. So uh, if you felt some type of way uh, that I threw you off the stream, um, you're always invited to pull up uh, during any of the office hours that we have, but just come correct, bro. Like cam up, you know, have your lights on and don't just come on like cursing and talking crazy. Cause like I said, I have to not only think about, you know, myself, I'm not going to like go back and forth with you at, at that level. I just don't, I'm not going to engage at that frequency with with another male like it doesn't even make sense <laughs> um but yeah i mean you you welcome to pull up at any time but like if you come like come with your questions i've already answered your question about why your wife was on the flyer right she was a co-convener of the black youtube nuremberg trials where black males were sentenced to death right and after that you know there was a big fallout that happened in the space where 
a notable content creator was kind of excommunicated from the uh, uh, the the band of traveling misandrists. So like you know, it was something that I, I certainly wanted to speak on because I've been speaking on it on the channel. Uh, three weeks ago, we hosted Brother Torin uh, Torin Walker, and we talked about uh, uh, black female expressions of red pill rage. You know, following the incident on Twitter where the, the sisters were referring to black men as bullet bags. So this is not anything different, you know, promoting black male death, normalizing black male death, uh, uh, calling for the cleansing or genocide of black males is something that, like as a nationalist, I'm gonna speak on. So that's really it. Family, we almost coming up on 16 minutes. I appreciate y'all pulling up. I'm gonna tap out. I'll talk to y'all soon. I'll see y'all tonight at 8.30 for another Manhood Monday. Peace.